Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, and uh, in this video, I'm going to have a look at a Lauer macro lens, manual focus, uh, fully manual settings, uh, no IS or anything like that, uh, 90 millimeter f2.8. You think, hang on, didn't I see Keith do a video about this lens the other day? No, the lens I did the other day was the Lauer 58mm, which is the brand new one. This one's been around for a little bit longer. Superficially, they're very similar to the extent that I'd say uh, that the biggest difference between them, apart from fraction of in length or something like that, the biggest difference between them is that this one's 90mm focal length and the other one is 58mm. Now, I dressed what the differences are a little bit in the other video but and, I, and I'll come back to this one at some point and actually look at what focal dif length differences make in macro photography. Um, they do make differences but not in the way that many people often think. It's about the scale of the background as much as anything. So it depends very much on what you're actually photographing as to whether it's noticeable. So here we go. Uh, it is a very solidly built, it's a metal lens. Now it gives a feel of solidity to it. Some might think well it's a little bit too heavy. I don't. I like it. It gives a feel. It's smooth. The uh, focus ring about a 210 degree swing on that rotation. It's very smooth. There's a aperture from 2.8 to f22. You have to set that manually and there is no information fed back to the camera. There are no electronics on this lens so from the camera's point of view there is no lens there. Um, so it works great on mirrorless cameras. Um, this particular photo here is a point contact diode, a wire photo of a point contact diode rather than the usual insect or a bit of plant. Um, I'm an industrial macro photographer. I actually do this as part of our professional work. Um, I photograph electronic components for companies and things, my, uh, produce pictures for uh, show, trade shows, adverts and things. Uh, ones like the little uh, credit card and chip there. But this one here, this was taken with this lens. So it's point contact diode. It's all about perhaps six, seven millimeters long. Um, I've done that. Come out very nice. If I'm using it um, on the EOS RP, which is what I've been testing it on, this is RF mount, available in other mounts as well. I have got a written article which has got more examples of the photos and things. There's a link to that in the, in the video notes. But uh, in general, it's a nice lens to use. Um, I've used it fully manual. So I'm using the, uh, the EOS RP is the one that I'm using for shooting this video. So uh, hence why I'm not showing this attached to a camera. Um, the aperture in it, it's a 13 blade uh, aperture, rounded blades, so it's got a nice out of focus look. I'll show that, in, I've got some examples in a moment. Um, it's internally focusing. Now, there are various versions of what internally focusing actually means, but in this instance, what we have is we have a a lens at the front and you can see the internal unit moves backwards and forwards as you change the focus setting. So that's fair enough. Uh, at the back here we also have, we can see movement as well. So it's not entirely sealed but this does prevent dust getting in the front. Now I've, I've seen designs before where the lens, the whole centre of the lens sort of drops inside. Looks a great place to collect dust if you're not careful. Now I tend to use lenses like this in the studio so dust is not that much of a problem. If you're using it outside you need to be a bit more careful with it. Um, it takes a you know, standard 72 millimeter, sorry, 67 millimeter filter. Um, comes with a lens hood. Um, this is useful if you're doing outside because, or you're using it as a normal lens. Because remember, although this is a macro lens, it works fine as a normal 90 millimeter lens if you wanted to use it for portrait use or something like that. Comes with this uh, lens hood, quite a long lens hood, and it does work well outdoors because you do not want sunlight or bright light hitting the front element here because it will reduce contrast and it will knock back image contrast. In terms of optical quality, um, I've only got the one lens to test here, so I don't ever really do sort of all the st all the tests, photographs of brick walls and things like that. I've got better stuff to do uh, because it doesn't tell you a great deal anyway. Suffice to say, there is virtually no chromatic aberration, uh, lateral or longitudinal 
longitudinal. Um, it, you can, if you look very, very carefully, you can just about detect it, but it's easily fixable in post-processing. Um, the, the quality of the image from this is very nice. It's a bit of vignetting at, say, at wide open, uh, which you'd expect off any lens. It drops at f4, 5.6, it's getting difficult to see. By f8, no real problem at all on the vignetting. Uh, likewise, the centre is perhaps, centre sharpness is best for f4, f5.6. It depends on the camera you're using um, to some extent. Um, I would never worry too much about uh, so-called diffraction problems. It's much overhyped. It's the sort of thing that's great for chatting about in forums for people who don't really actually take that many pictures. Um, if, you, if you take pictures, you appreciate the effects that sometimes you really do need f22. You need to stop down to get depth of field. And the slight loss of sharpness that you might get from diffraction is more than offset by the depth of field. Because remember, if you're focusing close with this lens, the depth of field is very thin. Um, in terms of f close focus, this does um, up to two times magnification, which is uh, a bit better than many uh, standard macros. Just go to one times magnification. At two times magnification, your, your subject's about this distance in front of the lens. Um, that's okay, but it may produce a few lighting issues. If you drop down to one magnification, you're about that distance there in front of the lens. So you've got plenty of space. If you need working distance, you'll go for a longer focal length. That's one of the differences that you notice between it. The 58 mil, for example, at two times magnification, you're much closer to the front element. Um, there's a risk of touching the front element, obviously, but also it just makes lighting more inconvenient. Now, quite a few of the shots I used, I used this, this contraption here, which is on, on top of my old 100D. Um, this is a Lauer KX100, KX800. Uh, twin flash, twin macro flash, with little soft boxes fitted on it. And things. I've, I'll put a link to that in the notes as well. I, I reviewed that years ago. Had this for years. It's very useful. I use it in my industrial photography on site. It's great for getting into things. And it's, yeah, the two soft boxes work very well. But uh, as I say, um, I believe Lauer still, still make that one. I have not checked though, but I will put a link to my review for that. But let's have a look at some examples of the lens in use that uh, may be helpful here. Now, I'm going to step through some examples. I'll inset these into the video uh, so you can actually see it. And I'm going to step through the apertures from f2.8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, 16, 22. Um, so those are the steps on this. They're fairly soft click stops, but they are click stops. Uh, for those of you uh, worrying about that for video purposes. So there we go. I'm going to go through these at 284. If you look at the outer focus areas, you can see they're quite good. 5, 6, 8, 11. There's, you know, the outer focus areas now a bit sharper, some of the different, you know, some of the reflections on it, but really not that much. That's, that's quite a good lens at 16. And then we go right the way up to 22. Um, now you can see um, we've got quite a bit of depth of field. Uh, this is at not at what this is probably at about 0.8 magnification or something like that. It's really just to show the out of focus effects there, which it does quite well for that. Now, what about focus breathing? Same scene as before. But what all I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the focal point from this front car to the car at the back. Notice how the field of view expands slightly. You get that with almost any lens. Some lenses, particularly zoom, some of them are really bad for this, but this one's not bad. So that's with it focused close. And I'm just going to step through, see a bit further. You can see if things are a little bit smaller. Next and to the little car at the back. And you can see this line at the front here was actually the front edge of the desk here. This is just taken here on a, on a tile. And it's quite noticeable, um, but it's not something you can, would have difficulty with in if you were stitching multiple shots together to do um, depth stacking. Now, if you want to do focus stacking, you will have to do it manually with this. 
uh, I've found that that's not actually that difficult with a bit of practice. Um, I've got some articles I've written about macro, uh, about all kinds of elements of this and I'll put some links to those also in the notes to the video. As they are. Uh, my written articles tend to have a lot more detail in them because there's a limit to how much you can easily show in a video and get it over. Um, how about some actual practical uses of the lens? Well, I, I showed the um, example of the diode earlier. This is just a quick one just to show you the difference between the 58mm and the 90 There is not a lot. If you look carefully, you will see that the distant cars in the 90mm one are slightly larger than the 58mm one. In other words, 58mm lens behaves like a 58mm lens and a 90mm behaves like a 90 That's really the difference between it. Uh, at the same magnification, things are the same scale. It's what's behind them that changes. So that looks a bit different on that. But anyway, things I was just photographing stuff. Now, this just happens to be uh, an old US Air Force signet ring. Um, now, I found this back in the 60s when I was a kid. I found it in the street, handed it into the police, as, as you did then with lost property. Uh, a month or two later, uh, my dad bought it back, said no, it had never been claimed. So it sat in one of my boxes of things for a long while. Um, it's very well worn. It's from when there were lots of uh, US Air Force, ba Air Force bases in Suffolk, where I grew up. So somebody must have dropped that. But it's a nice lens for that sort of photography, close-up photography. Um, you've got the magnification if you need it, but also with 90mm it's at a reasonable working distance, the perspective looks okay. So it's good for general sort of product photography like that. Now I said that I do industrial stuff. Well, this was just uh, just to see about doing it. Um, here we have the lens here taking picture of a very small flower on a cactus. Now you can see I'm using the flash unit here. Uh, quite useful outside. It is really quite handy um, the way the two just hang, you can adjust them. Now I've got ordinary macro units and a ring flash and things like that, uh, which are good for some types of lighting. But this is good for more creative lighting because you can turn the strength of one down, you can use it for backlighting, you can do all kinds. But you know, for a straightforward picture of a tiny flower, uh, this was taken at f16 to try and get a bit of depth of field. Um, you don't want to um, go for too wide an aperture unless you want everything absolutely out of focus. And the problem is when things are absolutely out of focus, you lose context for things. But anyway, that is a tiny little flower. There it is in front of the lens. Now, this next setup, I've got a dried flower. This is from um, the conservatory. It had uh, f uh, plant, flowered, the flowers had dried up. And there they are. And that's about real size. They're about that big. So. I'm photographing it here. You can see I'm using, on the back of the screen, I'm using focus peaking. Focus peaking, really useful on mirrorless. And these lenses are designed for mirrorless. Focus peaking really gives you a nice, clear idea of depth of field, and you can see it. And there is a photograph of that little dried flower. What did I do with that photograph? Well, that is this. Um, that is this picture. Uh, printed when I was testing the Epson P7500. Um, I've processed the picture because 26 megapixel from the camera. I've processed this picture using uh, Gigapixel AI to resize it a bit bigger. You could actually print this at twice this size comfortably. The lens itself, pin sharp no problems whatsoever. There was no work I needed doing on this. The out of focus areas on it, they don't look busy, they look okay. And that's at a reasonable working distance like that. So what would I use the lens for? Well, the same reason I use my TSE 90 uh, for medium product work. Um, I use it as a 90mm lens when I need a 90mm lens. I don't use, for the TSE 90, I don't actually use the tilt and shift that often with it. I use it more as a 90 and sometimes with extension tubes. And you can use this with extension tubes so you get a little bit of extension on it if you really want to. But you can't push it too far. But yeah, it does work with extension tubes, as, as does the 58. Um, but 
it's probably better with this. The, the effect varies because the extensions depend on the focal length. There are calculations you can make to work out the effective focal length from all of these things. But the advantage of mirrorless cameras is you just look on the back and you can actually see what's happening even better than you can in the viewfinder. So that's that one there. I'll just end up on the actual picture itself. Um, well, what more to say? It's a basic, and it is basic, but solidly built, optically good, 90 millimeter lens, f2.8, fully manual, and that's about it. It doesn't do anything fancy, it does what it does well. So, hope for that's of some interest. Have a look at the notes on the Northlight site as well. I've got the same, same stuff there. So, um, and lots more example photos you can go through. And um, yeah, there you go, yet another macro lens, but subtly different. And in many ways, I'd say for my work, the 90 is perhaps more useful than the 58. Uh, both very similar optically. It's what you're gonna use it for. But uh, anyway, thanks for looking for that. I've got a few more lens related things I'm gonna be pulling up as well as the printer stuff, because I know a lot of people uh, you know, watch the site just for the printer stuff or just for the lens stuff. I do try and mix it up a bit. If you've got any questions, let me know because it's people's suggestions from questions that often give me ideas for new videos. So thanks for watching and please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.